boys and girls from me, Henry, and Nibba. Now before we start, if you like today's video, press the like button, ring the bell, and hit the subscribe. Parents, remember, it costs you nothing to subscribe, and you will be the first to know when I, Henry, bring out my latest video. Now children, are we snuggled in? If so, we shall begin. Today's story is called The Hare and the Hedgehog. The story of a hare who challenges a hedgehog to a race. This story, my dear young children, seems to be false, but it really is true. My grandfather, through whom I have always heard it, used, always used to say when relating it, to say complacently, it must be true, my son, or else no one could tell it to you. The story is as follows. One Sunday morning about harvest time, just as the buckwheat was in bloom, the sun was shining bright in the heaven. The east wind was blowing, warmly over the stubble fields. The larks were singing in the sky and the bees buzzing amongst the buckwheat. The people were all going to their Sunday clothes to church and all the creatures were happy and the hedgehogs were very happy too. The hedgehog, however, was standing by his door with his arms akimbo enjoying the morning breeze and slowly trilling a little song to himself, which was neither better nor worse than the songs which the hedgehogs are in the habit of singing on a blessed Sunday morning. Whilst he thus was singing half aloud to himself, it suddenly occurred to him that while his wife was washing and drying the children, he might very well take a walk into a field and see how his turnips were getting on. The turnips were, in fact, close beside his house, and he and his family were accustomed to eating them, for which reason he looked upon them as his own. No sooner said than done, the hedgehog shut the house door behind him, then took the path to the field. He had not gone very far from home, and was just turning round the slow bush, which stands there outside the field to go up into the turnips when he observed the hare who had gone out on his business of the same kind namely to visit the cabbages when the hedgehog caught sight of the hare he bade him a friendly good morning but the hare who was in his own way a distinguished gentleman and frightfully haughty did not return the hedgehog's greeting, but said to him, assuming at the same time a very contemptuous manner, how do you happen to be running along here in a field so early in the morning? I am taking a walk, said the hedgehog. A walk, said the hare with a smile. It seemed to me that you might use your legs for a better purpose. This answer made the hedgehog furiously angry, for he can bear anything but an attack on his legs, just because they are crooked by nature. So now the hedgehog said to the hare, you seem to imagine that you can do more with your legs than I can with mine. That is just what I think, said the hare. That can be put to the test, said the hedgehog. I am worried that if we run a race, I will outstrip you. Ho, 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 cried the hare. That is ridiculous. You, you have short legs, said the hare. But for my part, I am willing. If you have such a monstrous fancy for it, what shall we wager? A golden Louis d'Or, a bottle of brandy, said the hedgehog. Don't, said the hare. Shake hands on it, and we may as well come at once. Nay, said the hedgehog, 
There is no such great hurry. I am still fasting. I will go home first and have a little breakfast. In half an hour I will be back at this place. Hereupon the hedgehog departed for the hare was quite satisfied with this. On his way the hedgehog thought to himself, the hare relies on his long legs, but I will contrive to get the better of him. He may be a great man, but he is very silly fellow, and he shall pay for it, for what he has said. So when the hedgehog reached home, he said to his wife, Wife, dress thyself quickly. Thou must go out into the field with me. What is going on then, said the wife? I have made a wager with the hare for a gold Louis Dior and a bottle of brandy. I am to run a race with him, and thou must be present. Good heavens, cried the wife. Husband, art thou now right in thy mind? Hast thou completely lost thy wits? What can make thee want to run a race with the hare? Hold thy tongue, woman, said the hedgehog. That is my affair. Don't begin to discuss things which are matters for men. Be off, dress thyself, and come with me. What could the hedgehog's wife do? She forced to obey him, whether she liked it or not. So when they had set off on their way together, the hedgehog said to his wife, Now pay close attention to what I'm going to see. Look you, I will make the long field our race course. The hare shall run in one floor, and I will run in another. And when we begin to run from the top, now all that has to do is to place thyself here below in the furrow. And when the hare arrives at the end of the furrow on the other side of thee, you must cry out to him, I'm already here. For then reached the field, and the hedgehog showed his wife her place, and then walked up to the field, he reached the top, the hare was already there. Shall we start, said the hare. Oh, oh, certainly, said the hedgehog. Then both at once, so saying, each placed himself in his own furrow. The hare counted. Once, twice, thrice, and away they went, off like a whirlwind down the field. The hedgehog, however, only ran about three paces, and then he stooped down in the furrow and stayed very quiet where he was. When the hare, the hare therefore arrived at the full career at low in the end of the field, the hedgehog's wife met him with a cry. I'm already here. The hare was shocked and wounded, not a little. For he thought no other than it was the hedgehog himself who was calling him from the hedgehogs. Although his wife looked just like the husband, he was unaware. The hare, however, thought to himself, This has not been done fairly, and cried, It must be run again. Let us have it again. And once more he went off like the wind in a storm, so that he seemed to fly. But the hedgehog's wife stayed quietly in her place. So when the hare reached the top of the field, the hedgehog himself cried out, I am here already. The hare, however, quite beside himself with anger, cried, It must be run again. We must have it again. All right, answered the hedgehog. For my part, we run as often as you choose. So the hare ran 73 times more, and the hedgehog always held out against him. And every time the hare reached either the top or the bottom of the field, either he or the hedgehog's wife said, I'm already here. After the 74th time, however, the hare could no longer reach the end. In the middle of the field, he felt the ground, water streaming from his mouth, and lay dead on the spot. But the hedgehog took the Louis Dior, which he had won, and the bottle of brandy, called his wife out to the furrow, and they both went home together in great delight. And if they are not dead, they are still living there to this day. This is how it happened that the hedgehog made the hare run races with him on the Bluxter Heath Reed, till he died, and since that time 
No hair has ever had a fancy for running races with books to hoo the hedgehogs. The moral of the story, however, is, firstly, that no one, however great he may be, shall permit himself to jest at anyone beneath him, and even if he only be a hedgehog, and secondly, it teaches that when a man marries, he should take a wife as his own position. He looks just as he himself looks. So whatsoever is a hedgehog, let him say to it that his wife is a hedgehog alone and so forth. Well, children, wasn't that an interesting little story? So from me, Henry, and Nipper, nighty-night, children, nighty-night, nighty-night.